Colin, what are you doing? I'm eating these donuts that I found on the train as research for today's show. Research, yeah. Did mm. you not read the script? Yes, it's about sugar. Yes, we're supposed to be cutting down on sugar. Not eating more. Well, I have eaten less than I normally eat. Oh my gosh, the producer's going to be fuming. Come on, let's go get ready for the show. Welcome to Health Digest This. Sugar. <laughs> And welcome to Health Digest This, the show where we investigate food so you don't have to. I'm Lucy and this is Colin and today we're talking all about sugar. So does that mean I get lots of chocolatey treats? Nope, it's the exact Feeling opposite. So. There's endless research suggesting how bad sugar can be. And making the headlines today, the Chief Medical Officer of the UK compared the threat to obesity of that of terrorism. So we want to find out if going sugar free is possible and what sticky pitfalls you need to look out for. It's going to be a long 30 minutes for me, Luce. Who knows, Colin, with what you, my friend, are going to find out on today's show, it might put you off sugar for good. Coming up, we'll be investigating hidden sugar, where it is and what it does. Our scientific reporter, Lizzie, will be telling us how sugar can affect our health. And we challenged a local lad to give up sugar for a week. If you want to know how he got on, stay tuned to find out more. And don't forget to follow us at Health Digest TV and share all your sweet sugary stories, both good and bad. But first, our reporter Aidy went to see what the general public knew about sugar. Hello, I'm here at the University of Salford in Media City, UK, and today we're going to find out what these people know about sugar. But I don't know, but they might be the type of, might be like fructose and that might be sucrose. I don't know. Lots of natural sugars in that. Oh. So the biggest eye opener for me, but I do eat quite a lot of the, the, the name, is how much additional sugars in that. When you want to eat raisins, it's like, oh, it's slightly healthier. Yeah, you get the healthier. Yeah. yeah. Probably the orange juice, I think. A lot of natural sugars, maybe. Drinks have got loads of sugar in them. Well, I was going to say raisins, because that's like the one nobody would say. No. <laughs> It's a good thing I don't like raisins then. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was I right? Five sugar? Yeah. 20 grams of sugar. That's why my diet's not working. There's, there's no sugar in Coca-Cola. Green tea's healthy for you. So. Well, just in my can. Yeah. You're joking. So if I have a can of that and a can of beans, I'm screwed. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I would go with a lot. But they're racking up. The, the grams are slowly yeah, racking up, aren't they? they? Are. I'll walk away and I'll have a real good think about me beans. So you keep I eating think. sugar, you're gonna die. See, that was the, the magic the magic word. You said small <laughs> small bags. Oh Go man. Don't always trust the healthy packaging. You must have hundreds. Like eight hundred. What three thousand? Yeah. Uh, two kilos of sugar total. I'd say a thousand. Yeah, a thousand. You're right. One of these bags of sugar. If it was an Asda from the supermarket and it had, say, that bottle, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll try that, I like that. But if I saw that sugar underneath it, it would make me think twice. It's secretly, it's a killer. Right? Right? Diabetes. You're done. <laughs> As you can see, there's more to sugar than meets the eye, and it appears we don't know much about it. Especially the potential negative effects and diseases like diabetes. Well, we have someone here who is an expert in this, so please welcome to the show, Julian. <laughs> Thank you very much, my friend. He's right. my friend, Julian, for coming to see us. Tell us a little bit about how you know so much about sugar. Well, I have to, because my life depends on it, because I'm a type 1 diabetic, so I need to match the insulin I inject with the amount of sugar and carbohydrate I eat. So I need to know. So with that in mind, tell us how important or uh, the effect of uh, food packaging has on you making that, that choice. Well, having been doing this now for well over two decades, you learn lots of things when you begin to read the packaging. So the first thing you learn is not to be conned by labels that say diabetic or sugar free. 
a lot of those labels, those products are no better for you than the other products. Always look and see how much sugar, how much carbohydrate is actually in it. And the other thing is, when you see a label that's low in something, it does tend to be high in something else. So when the food industry take fat out of a yogurt and make a low fat yogurt, they're actually making a high sugar yogurt. So you need to be very, very careful and always read how much sugar is actually in the product. So as a, as a diabetic, how, how important, obviously uh, being, because I know you very uh, good with food and stuff, like this, you're, you're a food person. Yeah. How does that affect taste and things like this? Well, sugar sweetness is one of the key four tastes that we have, sweet, salt, bitter, sugar, and a fifth taste, which is umami, which is flavor. So sugar puts flavor in, which is why the food industry is so keen on adding it. Is that why you hear people talk about a sweet tooth and stuff like that? Is it people that ha see that more? Yeah, some people have a sweet tooth and, and like overtly sweet things, but most of us respond very well. The pleasure centers in our brains light up when we eat sugar, which is why women like chocolate so much. So. Ooh, yeah. You like chocolate much, yeah, don't you? Yeah, uh, right. my baby. Do you find it difficult swapping things out and, and not eating as much sugar? No, I found it difficult at first, but you kind of get used to it in the end, and uh, you try and find things as a diabetic that are both low in sugar, but also uh, slowly release sugar, so that you're trying to avoid the peaks and troughs that you get if you're eating refined sugar. At the end of the day, refined sugar is the thing that we all need to avoid. So you talk about peaks and troughs, so you eat too much sugar, you get the sugar rush, is that what yeah. you cook? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's during those, as a diabetic, it's during those periods when my blood sugar is very high or very low that I can do the damage to my body in the long term. So I've got to try and keep things as much on an even keel as possible. Okay, listen, Julian, thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure. We really appreciate it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Julian Price. This week's Generation Wars, Doreen here has actively cut down her sugar consumption over the past year. But can her grandson Lewis do the same? Let's take a look. On today's show we are joined by a very special lady. Now not only has she cut down on her sugar allowance to the 25 grams per day, but she's also my grandma. Welcome to the show grandma, thanks for joining us today. Very welcome Emma darling. Thanks. Now grandma. Obviously I know a lot about you, but the viewers out there don't, so would you mind telling them a bit about yourself? Yes, I'm a darling. I'm your grandma, of course, and uh, my name is Doreen. I'm 70 years old, and I'm on the show to talk about the reduction of sugar in my diet. There is actually a story to why you've given up sugar, or you've decreased it so much in your diet. Would you mind sharing that with us? I went to the doctors to get my blood test results and um, I was told I was borderline diabetes number two. And do you think that you had a lot of sugar before you went? Did you yes, I think I probably did. I never used to look at the packaging until then, but now it's really opened my eyes. There is another reason that you're on the show today, isn't there, Grandma? We're very worried about a certain person in the family. Yes, that's my grandson. Yeah, he does. He's also my cousin. Yes. And we both know that he does consume a lot of sugar every day, doesn't he? Yes. So you don't want him to go down the same path? No, of course not. But someone so young, they don't bother about what they eat or drink. They don't look at labels. Uh, I'm afraid uh, that he may end up um, going down the same path as me and ending up with uh, diabetes type 2 at such a young age like that to happen. So now we're going to have a little chat with Lewis. We know more than anyone, don't we Gran, that you eat so much sugar. Mm. Have you actually thought about how much sugar that you eat each day? Uh, I never really thought about it. Um, not at all really, I, I just eat what I like to eat when I want to eat it. Um, but since Gran found out about being like close to being diabetic, that bit, well, I've sort of thought about it a little bit and I do eat my fair amount of sugar. Now, you've agreed to a sugar challenge, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So if you'd like to tell us a bit about that. Well, um, I'm just trying to get it down to the same amount as what my gran eats. I think it's something like 25 grams. Is that a day? Yeah. Yeah, it's a day, isn't it? Yeah. But it's not a week. It's cold, cool. so. Yeah, so I'm just going to try and see if I can match what she does. If that would be something you'd like, brilliant, I imagine, yeah. yeah? Yeah, brilliant. So, yeah, it's more, uh, yeah, I'd say it's more for me grand than it is for me. I'll probably still eat a few chocolate bars here and there, but... Oh, you need your treats. Yeah, need your treats, but... Of course you do. Yeah. 
actually prepared yeah. a little surprise for you in the kitchen. Right, let's go. Let's right, have a let's look. Go Are you coming, Grandma? Okay, yeah. yeah. Speaking of food swaps, we have our nutritionist Kit Parker here to help us investigate the sweet minefield that is the battle between the good and the bad sugars. Let's give a warm welcome to Kit, everybody. So Kit, let's have a quick swap to get our viewers in the mood. Okay, so we've got two different types of bread here. Um, on the right we have tiger bread, which has got 4.6 grams of sugar per slice. But then over here we've got the low GI bread, which is 0.6 grams of sugar per okay, slice. Okay, because I'm really scientific like you. Uh, you're going to have to tell me what GI means. Okay, GI stands for glycemic index, so it's how fast um, the food releases its sugar into your bloodstream. Okay, so high GI food will release it fast, giving you a sugar peak. Low GI will be slower, keep you sustained for longer. So that's what Julian was talking about before, yeah. the, the peaks and the troughs and stuff like that on the sugar stuff. That's interesting stuff. Yeah, so what have you got to give tips-wise for Colin? I mean, I know you've seen his diet. <laughs> Come on, give him some Okay, tips. so looking at um, the kind of uh, food diary we did, um, the guideline amount should be 30 grams of sugar a day. Why are you looking at me like I've done something <laughs> wrong, Kit, you know? Uh, well, the guideline amount is 30 <laughs> grams a day, and you've actually been consuming five times that. Right, well, we're wow. going to have to see that. Okay, so, so show us what show us what I should yeah yeah show us what I should be doing. Yeah. So the guideline amount should be the first one. You know that looks a lot, really, doesn't it? Like, what do you mean a lot? We should pop that in here. I might do it, I guess, for the rest for the full day. Okay, right. okay. And then and how much are you were consuming? So this is what I'm consuming. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You did, you did. No, what? <laughs> there we are. I He's being generous good, there. So that that's a builder's brew. <laughs> right, that's what goes in a builder's brew. That's bad, isn't it? That is. Okay, so we get a lot of <laughs> this really pizza, chips, toast, things like that. Right, I'm, I'm, I, I'm seeing over here some food <laughs> yep. that I don't really want to be seeing. Can you just tell us a little bit about uh, what I've got here? Okay, so we've got a chicken, ham and leek sort of stew. Okay, it's um, very low sugar. We're looking at um, kind of very low carb as well. Do you want to give it a go? Am I going to give this a go now? There's two forks there, but I'm going to let you... There is two forks here, Lucy. Well spotted. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'll hold this for you. Well, it's a spare. So I've got a spare fork. Right. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mmm. 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 See what I mean? Mmm. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to need some water for that. Um, yeah, actually, it's quite nice, actually. I'm only lying to you. Actually, it is quite nice. Uh, and if it's Kit, thank you. And if you want to find out uh, about this recipe, it is on our website. Making your own food is a great way of understanding how much sugar is going into it. But when you're buying food on the high street, brands have a sweet way of misleading us. Our corporate candy expert went out to find these hidden tricks. Hello everyone, I'm in Media City on a typically cold and windy Manchester day. I'm going to throw some words at you. Fructose, glucose, dextrose, lactose, evaporated cane juice, fruit juice concentrates, molasses and honey. What do these mean? Well. They're all substitutes for the word sugar. Sometimes companies will list their food as being sugar free and have one of these words on the ingredients list, meaning the companies are lying to us. So what are they lying about? Let's go find out. We often see food and drinks labeled with no added sugar, but this does not mean that it has a low sugar content. The food may contain ingredients that have a naturally high sugar content, such as milk, which contains lactose but this will not be shown as sugar on the label. Instead, it will just read milk. Another thing that the labels don't tell us is a child's guideline daily recommended amount. Some of us will look at the label and just assume that it won't be much different for a child to an adult. But in fact, there is a huge difference. For example, an orange drink labeled at 22% of an adult's maximum sugar is actually 105% of a child's daily recommended amount. Servings are another problem we have to tackle in trying to unravel the mysteries of sugar and business practices. When looking at packaging, there are a few things that can mislead the consumer. For example, companies will list how much sugar their product has per 100 milliliters, making it appear healthy. When a closer inspection of the packaging will reveal that it is actually a 500 milliliter drink and therefore contains five times the amount of sugar. Not only do companies mislead us with milliliter servings, they're also at fault for using out-of-date labels for food. Companies have been using old IDA labeling regulations. A motion has been put into practice to stop companies from doing this, but we'll have to wait until the new year to see if companies will be truthful with the consumer. Jay Hankin for Health Digest This. Back to the studio. So, 
So that's hopefully shown you what to look out for when you do your next shop. But has our studio audience learned enough to guess how much is sugar is in this trolley that Jay brought back? Thanks, Lucy. I've, I'm here with Keenan. Keenan. Ross. I thought you were going to say Kel. I'm here with <laughs> Keenan and Ross. Keenan, I want you to uh, rummage around and pick out some random things from the trolley. Do you have the orange? Just one. Just, yeah, yeah, random. Yeah, soda. random. Yeah. More random than that. Yeah, okay, okay that's yeah. nice and random. Good. You've got uh, the random one. I think that uh, random one there. Uh, and then just one more random one. Rubbish. Maybe yeah, somewhere. The beans, that looks yeah. yeah. Okay, mm. that's okay. One. completely at random. Not No suggestion. Uh, Keenan, tell us how much sugar you think's in the oh, curried in, beans. In the beans. Think Did about the curry. About 12 grams of sugar, I think. 12. Yourself? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say about 10. About 10. 10. 10. Yeah. Uh, the what's that say? Uh, this is a pomegranate green Just tea. Show. A pomegranate green tea. And how much do you think's in there? I think this one maybe a bit less, so ten for this one. Ten and yourself? I'd want to say less, but I feel like it's a it's a trick, so I'm going to say the same and ten again. You trust nobody, do you? <laughs> no. Right, hold up that. What have you got there? Uh, just some Nature Valley Bar honey and oats. Um, okay, think how about much honey? In there? I know. Well, um, I think it's quite a bit because obviously it's a slow release and it's an energy bar. Um, and as well the honey, so, so 12. 12, someone's been learning about the glycemic index mm, score. Yeah, I definitely think that that's both, uh, sorry, uh, more than both of these, so both of these. maybe about 14. Let's 14, take a 14, look 14, and see if these guys are right. Waiting for the brighter days. Waiting for the brighter days. Waiting for the brighter days. So, how many of you at home got that right? Tweet us using the hashtag HDTSugar and let us know. Whilst I try and get this food back above Colin, I'll let you catch up with Lewis's challenge in our second instalment of Generation Wars. Get off! That get off! Get off! I wouldn't be able to tell either way which one was which at all without one they both test the exact same. That one's better. Miles better. <laughs> exactly the same, like cork again. No. <laughs> That is great. That, the, the spoon, it's just digging into jam is the most unnatural thing in the world. That is disgusting. Absolutely horrible. Turn it off now. Mm. I think Lewis has put me off that. I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with that. Oh, no, Lewis has right put me off. It looks a bit warm, isn't it? No, no, it's it? all right. Hey. Mm? What? Oh. No, right, so Lewis's grandparents are here with us. Uh, Doreen and Alec. Everybody, please, round of applause. What did you think to the jam? Oh, it's, um, once you get used to it, it, it's fine. It does taste very different from the ordinary jam. The texture is slightly different, but you do get used to it. I think so once it's on your toast, sorry, I think once it's on your toast, it's, it's all right. I mean, it tasted right to me, so. Yeah, yeah, but Lewis didn't seem to think that, though, did he? That's why it put me off. It looks a bit watery, but like it's, you said, it's... It's just a matter of taste, really. Mm. You yeah. know, is it depending see. on the person? Do you like it, yes, Alex? Or? I think yeah, so. it's great. I don't normally eat jam. Oh, so it's so marmalade I eat. Oh, marmalade. Okay. Yeah. Is that high in sugar? Yes. Uh, it yes. is really, but yes, it, yes. Yeah, I have it uh, on toast. So you only have a little okay, bit right, to listen, put it down. We will come back to you guys uh, a little bit later on in the show. Okay. Now, sugar can damage your body in many different ways. Some you may know about and some you may not. So we uploaded Lizzie into our virtual reality lab right. Ooh. Uh, to uh, tell us more about the dangers of sugar. 
As a nation, we are consuming too much sugar. This is dramatically affecting our health. Right now, people are suffering from illnesses and conditions that could have easily been prevented. Here's how excess sugar is damaging our bodies. First, tooth decay. Tooth decay is caused by plaque, a thin film containing bacteria that coats the teeth. After you eat or drink, plaque bacteria digest the sugar in the foods and produce acids that weaken the tooth enamel. Currently in the UK, a third of five-year-olds have on average three teeth affected with tooth decay. The removal of children's teeth costs the NHS £30 million a year. This can largely be prevented simply by brushing teeth twice a day and reducing sugar consumption. Moving on to type 2 diabetes. Diabetes is a condition in which your body cannot properly process sugar. According to the International Diabetes Federation, more than 371 million people across the globe have diabetes and this figure is predicted to rise to over 550 million by 2030. 90% of these cases are type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes can be managed with lifestyle changes such as exercise and limiting of sugar intake to begin with. Another alarming condition linked to high sugar intake is heart disease. A study in 2014 found that people who got more than a quarter of their calories from added sugar were almost three times more likely to die of heart disease. Now, most people connect liver problems with alcohol. However, an unhealthy sugar-filled diet can lead to too much fat building up around the liver. This is known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It is currently believed that one in five people in the UK are in early stages of the condition and the vast majority of people are undiagnosed. It is responsible for 15 to 20% of liver transplants in the UK. But all of these very serious diseases can be prevented with very simple lifestyle changes. Cutting out the sugar you have in your tea, that last cookie in the jar, Friday night's takeaway or just going out for a walk can be a big step in improving your health and well-being. Do you know, I love it when we get our VR experts into our VR lab just to tell me how badly I'm treating my body on the inside. You know, like mm. I need extra facts than looking at the uh, mirror before breakfast in the morning. Yeah, anyway, um, it does show us how cutting down on sugar can have a positive effect on our bodies. Well, Lucy, let's put that to the test and find out if Lewis was able to put this positive effect into practice and cut down on his sugar in the final instalment of this week's Generation Wars. So, day one without sugar, um, hasn't affected me so far, I can say. Uh, this morning, instead of jam, I put a bit of butter on my toast, which was all right, didn't taste too bad. I've just had a damn salad butter for dinner, scrapped uh, my usual um, chocolate bar. So far, so good, not really feeling it. Tonight is my first night uh, playing football, uh, training, with uh, a lack of sugar in my system compared to usual. Fourth day in. It is getting to me a bit now, though. Um, I am starting to crave quite a bit of that sugar, but um, hopefully I can get through this session and not feel too groggy afterwards. <sighs> Just got in from footy, and I feel absolutely shocking my body is just craving some sort of sugar injection i feel absolutely exhausted and i feel like i just need to have a snickers or something like i won't be able to carry on without it i'm actually getting quite emotional thinking about chocolate this has definitely been the toughest day of the week here it is come about already day seven and uh, I've done it. I've I've done it. Like easy. Well, not easy. I've had a uh, had a few down days, but yeah, done. Twenty to twenty five grams per day. Sometimes even less. I can't say I'm gonna not gonna be partial to a chocolate bar here and there. I'd happily live the same way as I've done for this week for the rest of my life. That'd be a bit extreme, but yeah, I don't see why not. I've enjoyed it. Feeling all right. Feeling good. Feeling fresh. Feeling fresh for waking up as well, which is a shock. Don't need that uh, morning uh, cereal bar. But, yeah. Thank you very much. So, Dorian and Alec, you must be pleased with him. He lasted the full week, didn't he? Fantastic. Yes, it was yep. amazing. He did very well. Very, didn't very, think very he lasted that long. Him. Did you not? <sighs> no. So, Dorian, you're his grandmother. OK. So, the question to you is, uh, grands are supposed to make lots of sugary treats cookies and cakes and stuff so yes. do you think you helped him be addicted to sugar from a young age or yes probably and also i was baking cakes and i was eating them 
which I didn't realise mm. at the time was very bad for me. No. Why so, didn't you realise at the time? But there was no media like there is now. There was just nothing printed, nothing on the telly to tell you that sugar was dangerous in those mm. days. Mm. You yeah. just ate everything and you didn't think about it. So at what point, obviously on your journey, we'll talk about Lewis in a second, but on your journey to cut down on sugar, so at what point did you sort of say, I need to cut down on this sugar? What, what, what was the trigger for you? Well, the trigger was when I went to uh, the doctors to get my annual blood test results. Uh, the cholesterol was fine, the thyroid was fine, and then it came to uh, when she gave me the news about um, might be borderline type 2 diabetes, mm. and I was absolutely mm. gobsmacked. Shocking. I couldn't yeah. believe it. And this, and this is obviously, uh, why did it come as a shock? Because you didn't think... Well, it, it came as a shock because I, I've, I've never been obese and, and they no. sometimes uh, say people who are obese will, will, are more likely to get it, so I've never been obese. And um, previous to that, in the years previous, mm. I was told that my cholesterol was very high, so I'd already cut down on cakes and biscuits and bad mm. foods. She was really upset to start when with. she came through the door. So really I, was, I, was, I, was, I was a bit upset about it, yeah. So... Obviously, I'm not 19 years of age, a little bit older, so if we could give some advice to our younger generation out there about things, what would you say to them? Well, I would say just think twice before you have that uh, extra teaspoon yeah. of sugar in Cut your drink. Cut out the sugar butties. <laughs> uh, we were chatting about these before, sugar butties. Mm. <laughs> a, a Bolton delicacy. <laughs> no. Well, I, I was when we was when you mentioned sugar butties earlier. Yep. I had to confess, and I'll confess. No, right yeah, now too, they're, all, they're all coming out. They're all coming out of the woodwork. Now, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I like treacle sandwiches. <gasps> Gold, oh, golden syrup me. sandwiches. Yes, I, I mean, did. All right, welcome to I the confessional section <laughs> of our show, ladies and gentlemen. No, yeah. but, yeah. Oh, well, what is a good food um, for you? Like, what are the little tips, what you could, like, yeah, tell us to eat? Because I'm sure you mentioned something to me earlier about a certain nut. Ah, oh, walnuts, yes. I've discovered mm. that walnuts, walnuts are an absolute superfood. They lower the risk of diabetes, mm. actually, mm. and they lower the risk of heart disease also. Oh. So they're worth having on, on your diet of uh, each day, just a few because they're very, very filling, actually. Oh. Just a few every day. If you're having a, a drink at night, watching the telly, just eat a few just walnuts. Few. Instead of Fantastic. grazing on a packet of crisps, you might as well graze Oh, them absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Locate your local butcher and go and get fresh food. Yes, well, this is the thing we as well. Like, so Not when you were younger, obviously butchers were a big thing everywhere. They oh, were. yes. Grocers yeah. were everywhere. So yes. Do you think that has an effect on how we consume our food of today? Of course, I because so, you have yeah. all these packets mm. in the mm. supermarkets now, yeah. and the butchers are disappearing from the high street. We travel to Bolton from where we live mm. in Tilsley to get our meals, which are made daily, and we freeze, and we get about six to eight weeks uh, supply. And, uh, and he makes some fantastic meals, fresh meals. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. And I know how busy you are. I think we've learned something. You've taught us a lot. I think hopefully you've taught our studio audience. Uh, mm. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause, please, for Dorian and Ali. are convinced to reduce your sugar please be sure to tweet us at health digest tv and check out our website for some more great tips now as i said before sadly <laughs> we have reached the end of the show but don't despair we'll be back next week with a packed show all about protein so any of you gym nuts out there i'm looking at the audience there's a lot of them uh, it's going to be a good one so don't miss it Thanks to our great guests, our lovely studio audience, and you guys at home for tuning in. I've been Lucy Machin. And I've been Colin McKevitt, and we will see you next week for more Health, Health Digest, Digest This. this. Woo! <laughs>